Hello everybody and welcome to day 77 of the 90 day video challenge stepping into 2020 on the right foot. We have survived yet another day and today certainly seemed like a breeze after yesterday. Yeah. Everybody. For, it was freezing. It's continuing to be cold, but it was warmer today than it was yesterday. Oh, at six o'clock this morning, whenever we went to the pig farm, it was 20 degrees. Well, that's true. But it did warm up this afternoon. Yeah. But it was good. We got up this morning and had breakfast with Papa and Nana. And they got to send everybody off to school and to work. And then they went home and they arrived safely. So that was good. But as far as activities and such, it seems like tonight's the first night we've been able to just chill for a while. Yeah. So uh, that was good. I don't know if anybody else out there watches this, but we're watching The Walking Dead. So we just started this like several months ago. So we're on like season four and everybody else is, I think it's on like season 10 now or something. I don't know. But everybody's like, oh, well, you should wait till this happens or that happens. And I'm like, shut up. I don't want to know. So it's it's a fun show. Uh, if zombies are not your thing, you probably wouldn't like it. But I think it's interesting. <laughs> it's something that has to grow on you. One of the kids asked me tonight during the show, <laughs> if they turned to zombies, would I finish them off? And I was like, uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> if I wasn't a zombie, I would have to, right? That's okay, because she said, I'd kill you too if you were a zombie. <laughs> yeah. You often wonder what would happen in a situation like that, but you never know until you're in it, I guess. So, anyway, random thoughts from the Todd household. Uh Today is also day 38 in the 40-day prayer challenge. Uh, getting close to the end, but let's finish strong. Today is climb the watchtower from Habakkuk 2.1. I will climb up to my watchtower and stand at my guard post. Mark starts out by saying watchtowers served a variety of purposes in ancient culture. As built-in defense systems in the walls of ancient cities, as built-in pastures, so shepherds could provide, so could, so shepherds could protect their flocks from wild animals, and as built-in vineyards for protection from thieves, watchmen would climb into their watchtower, station themselves at their guard post, and scan the horizon for enemies or trading armies or trading caravans. So the watchman was sort of the first line of defense. Mm -hmm. And really what he's getting into is that prayer it serves the same purpose in our lives. Yeah. And he goes on here in just a minute to say that intercessors are watchmen and watchwomen because they're making the choice to step out and pray over and watch and mm -hmm. see um, when God sends signs and he talks about his watchtower being the coffee house, Ebenezer's coffee house. He says he loves praying on the rooftop because he's praying on top of an answered prayer. I often climb the ladder, pop the hatch, and pace back and forth in prayer. It's hard not to pray with faith whenever we pray in a place where God has already done a miracle. So that's true. It's probably a lot more difficult to have that same prayer when you're waiting on a miracle. Mm -hmm. When you've never really seen any evidence before. That, or maybe you're just in a place where you're waiting on a miracle. Uh, and, you you know, you get frustrated. And well, and you think he's going to do it the same way that he did it before if he has done it. And mm -hmm. he very seldom ever does because we're not in the same place. Yeah. Um, but he does want to, he wants to step in and he wants to bless people but mm -hmm. I'm just saying it can be hard it can be hard to be in that place spiritually emotionally whenever you're in the in the middle of a trial mm -hmm. but that's where that's where he's calling us to go yeah he talks about Elijah um, and Elijah's, I've, this story is fascinating to me. Uh, so Elijah was up on Mount Carmel. He battled all the prophets of Baal. He uh, 
called down fire from heaven and God sent down fire and burned up both altars and it's a pretty awesome story you should read it um, I believe it's in first Kings might be second Kings it's one of those kings um, does he say in here Mm-mm. I don't want to anyway but right after that miracle where Elijah called down fire from heaven defeated the 450 prophets prophets of Baal he turned right around and said it's gonna rain now the interesting part of that story is uh, Elijah had said three years prior that it won't rain on the land again until uh, until he says so mm-hmm. so that's a pretty bold statement in and of itself but now here it is three years later and you've just won this big victory over the prophets of Baal and now you're saying it's gonna rain and so what did he do well he's piggybacking on the miracles that people have seen and he prayed to God and but he, he, hit put, his, he hit his knees right there he did and he made a point to put God's name on the line not his that this is again going back to praying his word that you're going to mm-hmm. do what you say you do so Elijah drops down starts praying right there that God would make it rain and he sent his servant seven times back to look for rain clouds and every the six times he went and came back there's no no cloud elijah kept praying there's no cloud elijah kept praying the seventh time he came back so there's a cloud the size of a man's hand on the horizon so elijah got his stuff and he told the king you better hurry up and get out of here it's going to rain and he took off so it's interesting that he did piggyback off of the fire. He called down the fire. Mm -hmm. And you wonder, what was he piggybacking calling down the fire off of? What did it, what was, if you go back and you trace back through through Elijah's life, what was the original thing, I wonder, that set him off on that um, lifetime of prayer and miracles? On understanding the power Mm -hmm. that he had in the authority of Jesus or in the yeah. authority of God. But through all of that, Elijah needed to pray hard. And so when he did, well, we see an example there of being able to pray hard and pray and believe God for bigger and better things because God did greater things all through Elijah's life and even on into Elisha. And, you know, Elisha did twice as many miracles as Elijah. And so he got the double blessing. Now, it was Elisha's bones that raised the dead man whenever they hit him in the grave, right? right? Yeah. Right. Uh, he talks about geography and spirituality not, not being unrelated. Um, he talks about that's why the Israelites built memorials in places of spiritual significance. Um, David, he says, I, I have, a, I can't talk. He says that David, more than likely, and I mean, we're just sort of speculating here, revisited the battlefield where he defeated Goliath. He says he thinks that Abraham might have made a pilgrimage or two back to the thicket where God provided the ram. Peter might have rode out to the place on the Sea of Galilee where he walked on water, all to renew their faith. He says, going back to places of spiritual significance should be part of our spiritual rhythm. And that's true. I can think over the course of my adult life, there's been several times I've gone back to where I grew up, where significant things have happened in the course of my life, and it does renew your spirit. Mm-hmm. Well, and in your relationship with your spouse, too, whenever you go back to where you had your first date, or where you kissed for the first time on the bridge. And you're able to... You were to, just talking about that the other night. I know. And you're able to remember those things. Mm-hmm. It is it is something that you go, oh, yeah. Especially if you're in the middle of a season where you feel very distant. It can bring you back to where you feel close again. Mm-hmm. Because faith is not necessarily about a feeling, neither is love. It is about... 
doing instead of because you do these things, I'm going to have faith in you or I'm going to love you. It's in spite of everything else, I'm going to have faith. I'm going to love you. So both of those, both faith and love can wane. He talks about where we pray is not insignificant. He says we need to find a place free from distraction where we get good reception <laughs> and where we can focus and where our faith is strong. Uh, for me, I, I do it at my desk most every day. And there are times that I've, I've gone and been in a quiet place for a significant period of time, and it certainly is helpful. If you get away from the distraction of phones and internet and texts and Facebook and or as my dad used to say, the space book. But now he's on Facebook more than I am. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. But when we get to a place where we're not distracted, it lets us focus in on the still small voice of God. God is not like a diesel horn. Uh, he is small and soft mm-hmm. in our ears. Some places that you might consider if you haven't considered them before is going for a walk whether that is like we do sometimes at the high school there's the track that for us is open to the public and and that's a place that we can go and feel relatively safe we don't have to worry about that or go for a drive i know gas is expensive nowadays but i used to go for a drive to be able to just have quiet i mean you know, whenever you've got a house of seven people, it's hard to get any place that's quiet mm-hmm. unless, like he said, in the morning everybody's still asleep or everybody has went to bed and it's super late at night. And that is not usually conducive for you to be able to necessarily focus. Mm-hmm. And what are the other places that they might go to? Well, a park is a good place. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's been several times I've gone to the lake, you know, it's a city park, and you can uh, sit there on the bench and at the water, and it's quiet. Uh, there are places around town, uh, city parks, or maybe uh, a sitting area where you can just be quiet and be in the shade, watch people go by. I think it's fun to just sit and be quiet and as, you know, watch people go by and mm-hmm. do some praying. Prayer targets, he talks about one translation of Habakkuk 2.1 reads, I will stand upon my watch and station me within a circle. He says that scripture inspired Honey to draw a circle in the sand and pray for rain. Honey stationed himself within the circle by kneeling inside it and, in, and praying the prayer that saved a generation. Lord of the universe, I swear before your great name that I will not move from this circle until you have shown mercy upon your children. Honey was willing to die within that circle. He goes on and talks about nothing magical about circling things, but there is something biblical about it. Mm -hmm. And that, that means being willing to stick with your cause, whatever it is you're praying for, and seeing that you get an answer, whether it's the answer you want or an answer that you don't want. He talks about uh, speaking at a prayer meeting in New York where he met a family that had uh, started a youth ministry and they didn't really know what they were doing, but it has gained quite a following. Um, God's story in their lives is quite remarkable if you read it. Uh, he talks about a couple of other things. He said the longest prayer circle may be a 2,000-mile prayer drive around six New England states for his friend Josh Gagnon. Uh, and then he talks about the most unique prayer circle happened right in his backyard. He says, I don't necessarily prescribe it, but... There were some friends that felt led to bury 3,000 Bibles around the 72-mile beltway around Washington, D.C. So apparently, uh, the beltway is the main drag that goes around the city. And uh, so they just went and Mm -hmm. buried a bag of 15, I think, at a time. So it was a backpack, 
It doesn't say. It just says backpacks filled with Bibles. I don't know where I got 15, but well, they were 40 paces they, apart. Yeah, planted Bibles in the ground 40 paces apart. Right. All the way around the 72 miles. Now, that's being dedicated to seeing God move in a situation. And the thing that, that he talked about a couple of times, with Honey, Honey was willing to die in that circle. And how often are we that committed to the things that we're circling? Are we willing to risk it all within that circle in order to see God move? So that's, that's uh, something to consider. He says, let me be clear, there's, or let me repeat, there's nothing magical about circling. It honestly doesn't matter whether it's literal or figurative. It can be a circle, oval, square, or hexagon. The shape isn't the point. The point is this. If the Holy Spirit prompts us to pray, then we need to take a step of faith and mark God's territory. And then the thought for the day is going back to places of spiritual significance can help us find our way forward again. I like that. We need to take a step of faith and mark God's territory. If he has said, this is what I'm calling you to, then it's up to us to mark it and stand firm in it. So. And he did not give us a spirit of fear. No. But of power, love, and self-discipline. Mm-hmm. So. Anyway. Mark that territory. Not like a dog. Maybe like a dog. <laughs> We're not going to judge. Well, the police might. He so might judge. Just be careful where you do that. <laughs> Tomorrow, day 39, is holy ground. So we got tomorrow and one more day after that, and then we'll be done with the 40-day prayer challenge. Yeah. And I'm, I'm getting quite a bit out of this one. Uh, you know, stuff like we've gone, we've gone over several things in the last week that have really sort of hit me hard, but that today is, you know, mark the territory. What are we doing to mark the territory that God has said this is what I want for you. So, something to consider. Anyway, we will be back tomorrow, day 78, right? Mm -hmm. Day 39. So all these numbers are getting confusing. But I want you... Fun math fact. 39 is half of 78. Go ahead. Did you just think of that? Yeah. Or you've been working on that for a while. Okay. Which is it? No, I just thought of it. Yeah. 39 is half of 78. Very cool. <laughs> <laughs> so now you threw me off with all your math talk. <laughs> but we will be back tomorrow. Hope you guys will join us. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and be alerted whenever we do a new video, which is going to be awesome come the first of the year. And to be alerted, you have to click that bell. Ding, Ding the bell. And I should get me a bell. Wait a minute. Do you have a bell? Wait a minute. Oh, he's running away. I bet I'm not going to be able to find it now. Did you have a bell? I had a bell. Huh. I got it at the at the marathon. You remember the marathon? Oh, we got the yeah. little blue bell. Blue bell. Mm. Can't find it. Little baby cow bell. Oh, well. All right. Everybody, we'll see you tomorrow. Day 78. Eight. All right. Have a good night.